One of my ministry heroes from history has to be Lemuel Haynes. Uh, Lemuel Haynes is an African American born uh, under what most folks regard as suspect uh, circumstances in his day in the late 1700s, uh, born to a white woman and a black man, was as an infant or very young, um, sent into indentured servitude, servanthood, raised by a deacon Rose and his family, and that's where he learned the basics of the faith and the doctrines of grace. And uh, it was the Rose family's custom to uh, read a sermon from Whitfield or Edwards or some such figure um, at their family devotions. And one night, Lemuel Haynes read a sermon, and the family was deeply impressed by it, moved by it. And Deacon Rose asked, is that Whitfield? And Haynes said, no, kind of shyly. And he says, is that, is that Edwards? And again, Haynes answered no, um, until finally he admitted that it was his own sermon. And Deacon Rose thought to himself, uh, he is far more profitable to Christ and the kingdom if he is trained to, to preach and to serve the church. And so Lemuel Haynes became the first African-American awarded an honorary degree by Middlebury College. Uh, he pastored for over 30 years an all-white congregation in Rutland, Vermont, before moving on to pastor also in New York. Um, and what I love about Lemuel Haynes is his firm grasp uh, of deep doctrine, the, the fire with which he preaches evangelistically, uh, almost Puritanesque style of laying down the law and applying it to the hearers and lifting up Christ. But not only was he an heir of Jonathan Edwards, uh, a sort of new light um, Calvinist, but, but he improved Edwards' legacy. Because where Edwards failed in his thinking about the, the major social justice issue of his day, slavery, Lemuel Haynes would also write and defend, write about and defend the liberty uh, of Africans. His essays, Liberty Further Extended um, and True Republicanism Defined, uh, are to this day just elegant works in biblical exegesis, in the, the marshalling of martial law, in the call for justice, and really to live out a genuinely Christian ethic. Um, and so he becomes one of those early exemplars, late 1700s into the early 1800s, of what it would mean to be faithful to the gospel and faithful to justice in your context, the living out of the gospel, the liberating power of the gospel uh, in your context. So he would be a hero uh, from history. Uh, and I think one of the heroes for me of sort of in my personal life uh, living is uh, one of my first pastors, Peter Rochelle. Uh, here's a man that is faithful to the exposition of Scripture, preaches it with a warm heart. He is, for me, the definition of a of, uh, pastor's heart, of pastoral ministry of tenderness and care uh, for God's people. Uh, I had the privilege of sitting under his ministry for a number of years and then laboring with him as one of his elders for a number of years. Uh, and, and to this day, some 15 years later, uh, his example is a guiding example for me of being tender and patient and kind, of responding even to those, as 2 Timothy 2, 24 says, responding even to those who oppose you with gentleness and, uh, and, and teaching with patience and long-suffering that God might grant repentance. And so he is, for me, uh, a dear friend and a, and a hero in the faith.